Hi <laughs> everybody, I can't help being on cloud nine because I am once again in the stratosphere of driver enthusiast choice for cars, the 2022 Porsche 911 GT3. Ha, <laughs> this thing is properly up there. This is the first GT car based on the 992 generation Porsche 911, but it is the seventh generation GT3 if you count the mid-cycle updates that were made throughout the years. And that's because the very first official Porsche 911 GT3 was built on the 996 generation car, and it's been 996, 997, 991, and now this first 992 generation car. Now in terms of trims of 911, there are a big swath of 911s available on the 992 generation already, and it's debatable where this falls in the lineup. It is one of the most expensive, but it isn't the most powerful. It isn't fastest in a straight line, so it really does depend on where you personally put the GT3. Also, this is all but certainly not the last version of Porsche 911 to come out on the 992 platform, so, you know, where this will land in at the end of the day is, like I said, kind of up for debate. But in terms of the driver enthusiast choice, this is definitely at or very close to the top. And of course, such an illustrious introduction to a car means that it can't be cheap, and this certainly isn't. Starting price is $164,150, and my test car costs $177,780. Now, there is still a lot to talk about here, of course, but let me first get out and show you around and inside the car. All right, everybody, let's take a closer look at this 2022 Porsche 911 GT3. Now this particular one is painted in guards red paint, which is a standard color on this car, but the wheels, which you might see right here, have a satin finish and a guards red outer ring on them, and those are $1,950 extra, but matches the guard red paint really, really well, money well spent. Also, since we're here, Let's take a close look at these wheels. They are 20 inches in front, 21 inches in back, and yes, on both the front and back, those are center locking hubs right there. How about that? Now, this is definitely a bigger car than the outgoing 991.2 chassis 911 GT3, but it barely weighs anything more. According to Porsche, it's only 11 pounds heavier than the last model, despite the size. And part of the reason for that is they employed a lot of light weighting techniques, such as the hood, rear wing, and rear spoiler are all made from carbon fiber reinforced plastic. And I just popped the hood to show you that it is basically a carbon fiber weave. It's just not pure carbon fiber. This particular car doesn't have it, but you can also get a carbon fiber reinforced roof as well. But standard on the cars are also thinner, lighter weight glass. And that's the windshield and the windows all over the car. So this has thinner, lighter weight glass than a 911 Carrera and as well as the 911 GT3 of the last generation. So that helps take some of the weight out. Also, the sport exhaust on the 911 GT3 is stainless steel, but is also 22 pounds lighter than the last generation GT3 sport exhaust. Looking at the car from the front, I mean, first of all, <laughs> it looks so insanely cool, right? I mean, that's the first thing you notice. The second thing you notice is look how low to the ground this thing really is. You are just a few inches off the ground. That's really impressive. Also, you have big openings down here. Intercooler down here, space for cooling different vents and cooling the brakes out there on the edge. And for this big duct right here, there's actually an escape for that air right there. So the air comes in here, exits right here, cools some intercoolers as it goes, and uh, just has this super cool and purposeful look as it does it. You've got these super cool looking headlights that has this like main projector in the center and then four smaller lights surrounding it, which have a cool effect when you're uh, coming up on another car, see it lit. 
And by the way, that lower spoiler lip down there is legit. That does add some functional downforce to this GT3. Porsche claims that you have up to 150% more downforce than the Alcoin model, and this is part of it. Looking at the car in profile, there is a better view of the swan neck rear spoiler right over there, which is gorgeous, and we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Also, you can see that those massive wheels really fill those arches nicely. Um, I'll take a moment to put the dimensions up on the screen right now so you can see them. Also, this is a good time to mention that this is 20 millimeters or 8 tenths of an inch lower to the ground than a standard 911 Carrera. All right, let's take another look at those wheels and actually inside them because you have massive 16.1 inch brake rotors in front with six piston fixed caliper squeezing on them. And then in back, you still have very large 15 inch rotors with four piston fixed calipers squeezing on those. Now, the brakes in the rear are the same size, but in front, they're over an inch bigger, 1.1 inches bigger. And yet, Porsche says the brakes are also lighter than the outgoing model. And they did a lot of work to give effective brake cooling to them. So it's just a great, great system. And these are the standard brakes, but composite brakes are available on this car and they would in fact take even more weight off. Let's take a moment to look at this swan neck mounted rear wing on this GT3. It is big and beautiful and adjustable. You can't see it from here, but on the inside, you see those torque screws there and there it is four position adjustable. You can see the little notches right there. Four position adjustable rear wing and it's easy enough to do right there. There's a lot of adjustments on this car that you can make. This one is just the easiest and most obvious to show you. So you do still have a duckbill spoiler as well. Just above GT3 and Porsche, you do have this across the side illuminated piece right there. Beneath that, here is your rear diffuser. And this is not just for show, guys. This is legit. This adds downforce to the car. Like I said, over 150% increase over the last generation model. This plays a role. Okay, I wanted to show you a couple more details. First of all, these are the tread blocks of the Goodyear Eagle F1 tire. As you can see, we've got big, big, massive, thick chunks of rubber. Also, let's take a look at the new for GT3 suspension. This is the double wishbone front suspension. Now, standard Porsches run on struts, which is very common in most any road car these days, but the preferred suspension geometry for real supercars is double wishbone, of course. And not only is this a double wishbone suspension, but this is the double wishbone suspension derived from the Porsche 911 RSR, which is their Le Mans class winning car. That's what this is from. And actually, before that, it came from a prototype, an LMP2, back in 2005. So this is looking from the front side. As you can see, I have the wheel cranked all the way. I'll go to the other side of the car. All right, now we're on the other side of the car and you can see the back of the suspension. And you can see the lower arm's hard to see all at once, but then there is the upper arm right there. And then you have your shock absorber and coilover spring mounted right there. Also, you might notice there are some bushings, but there are also a lot of ball joints used instead of bushings to mount the suspension. So it gives you a really firm, fast responding suspension, really fantastic for front end response and just good stability and all those things. All right, these recessed door handles, they kind of engage, they're solenoid driven. So when you kind of pull on them, they kind of pull out and they kind of stay out like that once you open the door. Door feels pretty darn light. And we've got this optional $6,230 black and guard red stitching um, interior. And it has this race tech synthetic suede as part of the inserts and things like that. And it just, it looks lovely. You've got this really nice, beautiful finish GT3 kick plate right here. And this is a fun little thing. Here's your openings for the front and the rear, but check this out. So here's the front. I actually showed you that already. Very light, very lovely. What are you opening when you press this rear one? Well, I'll show you. You're opening this guy right here. <laughs> yep, this is how you access coolant and oil. These are the standard Sport Seats Plus 
with GT3 embossed in the seats right there. And of course you got fantastic and deep upper bolsters here and lower bolsters down here. And it is both manually and power adjusted. So you can adjust seat height and seat back right here. And then fore aft is adjusted manually right here. You do have tilt and telescoping steering. It is manually adjusted and right there. And look down there, oh yes, three pedals. Clutch in. What you are looking at here is a real analog large and center place tachometer with a little digital speedometer beneath that. And then on either side, that's one and that's another seven inch screen. So these are digital screens right here, but that is an analog and real gauge in the center. And because these are digital screens on either side, they're also adjustable. There's a lot of different things you can do with that. Um, I'm not gonna go into it in depth, but I am gonna show you a couple things because here is the race Tech's steering wheel right here multifunction steering wheel this is standard with the gt3 this is not an option and that includes the steering wheel mounted drive modes and you choose from normal sport and track those are your three drive modes and sport and track have individual settings so you can individually adjust sport and track and you do that by pressing this button right here and right here, now you can see I can choose between sport and track. Well, this side, this button right here, I can pl start playing with it here. So I press that and you can see the options I have for the sport driving mode setting. Of course, I have the exhaust system set to loud. This is where I turn the auto blip system on. Um, it's not on for the normal mode. And then I have these other systems here. So track view, if you turn it to track view, that gives you a different look for the digital cluster. It's a simplified look. And you can see that I have a simplified amount of information when I have track view on. You get a 10.9 inch center console touchscreen and uh, there's the usual basic stuff here. And it's actually kind of a low res simplified version of center console touchscreens compared to a lot of stuff these days. But in a car like this, that is 100% okay. And there is one thing I wanna show you. So if we go to vehicle, this gives you more of that information I showed you briefly on the steering wheel. So this is another way to play with that stuff. Looking down, this car is equipped with the $3,670 front axle lift system. It lifts the car by 1.2 inches um, when you turn this on and works up to 31 miles an hour. And real quick, let me show you how it works. So I have a camera mounted outside so you can see. You have two shock absorber settings, sport and track. Because I'm in the sport driving mode at the moment, it is currently set to track, hazard lights, and then here's your stability control off, stability control and traction control off buttons. It is a dual climate control system. You can see that stuff right here, but who cares when you've got this glorious looking six speed manual transmission right here. Yes, you can get this car with the seven speed PDK, but manual transmissions just add that level of engagement and this is a really good fast acting manual transmission but why not have a little bit of luxury still so we have heated seats right there just below this gt3 badge right here um it is an electric parking brake and yeah we even get a cup holder as well as a little bit of storage in this lower center console bin and you got a couple of usb type c ports right there and this looks like a lovely tray for your smartphone let's get back to the drive this engine, this engine that's actually right back there is from the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup race car. That's right, this is a race engine effectively. Now, it did also live in another production car. It was a limited run production car, the 2019 Porsche Speedster. And that car was amazing. I actually got a chance to drive that car when I worked at Auto Week, and I will put a link to that article in the description if you want to check that out. But Porsche did fiddle and improve this engine since it's been in the Speedster. For example, it has new pistons. So as a result, this is a four liter flat six or horizontally opposed six cylinder engine with 502 horsepower and 346 pound feet of torque. And that 502 horsepower comes at 8,400 RPM and the peak torque comes at 6,100 RPM 
and your first thought might be like, man, that torque peak and that horsepower peak is quite high, but then <laughs> you hear me tell you that the red line is 9,000 RPM on this thing, and it starts making a lot more sense. Part of what makes this engine so cool is it's so incredibly responsive, and that's because it has six individual throttle bodies, one for each cylinder. It also has a 13.3 to one compression ratio, and as you might imagine, there's gonna be some G-loading in this car, so it does have a dry sump oil system as well. A Porsche Doppelkupplung transmission, or PDK, is standard equipment in the 2022 Porsche 911 GT3, but, but, a six-speed manual transmission is a no-cost option, and as you saw on the walk around, that's exactly what this car has. I am doing the shifting by myself and I am very, very happy about it. The 911 GT3 is of course rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive like some of the other 911s out there. And you do get as stock a mechanical limited slip differential. And just to get it out of the way, yes, this does get fuel economy. No, it's not very good. 14 miles to the gallon in the city, 18 miles to the gallon on the interstate, 16 combined. And that actually adds to the price because this is one of the very few cars out there today that has to pay a gas guzzler tax. As I'll show you in a little while, it's not great for engine noise on the interstate, but man, oh man, is that not the point of this car? I just felt kind of obligated to say it. So if it's not good for cruising on the interstate and it's not good for fuel economy, well, what is it good for? Well, for one thing, noise, because listen to that glorious, glorious sound. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What a fantastic, glorious, amazing sound from this four liter flat six engine that I assure you does not get old anytime fast. And one thing you might have noticed is that was pretty quick and that was just one quick pull in second gear. We could do a lot better than that, I assure you. And let me assure you by showing you. All right, everybody, time for an acceleration test. I do have the car in sport mode and I also have the stability and traction control off. It is also a manual transmission, so I'm on my own there. Let's see how it goes. All right, coming to a complete stop. First gear, decent amount of revs. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so good. All right, let's do this. Oh, 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 oh come on. Oh, God, God. Oh, oh, man. Oh, wow, 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 wow. That was only third gear. Oh, man, oh, man. What a glorious sound. What glorious acceleration. And you could hear I bogged the engine down a little bit. I definitely could have gotten away with more revs and had a stronger launch that way, but wow. Straight line speed is insane in this thing. Insanely good. Oh man, I could do that over and over again. But there's actually one more straight line test to do before I'm done, and that is a braking test. A car like this, it's gonna be accelerating, but probably on straightaways going into a corner and you'll need to slow down for that corner so let's see how these bigger brakes do on this seventh generation 911 gt3 i'm going just above 60 miles an hour i'm just going to go full abs stop here i don't know right about now oh, man. <laughs> oh. That did not take long. <laughs> and yet that is not the main purpose of this car. Going fast in a straight line can be done better in a Porsche 911 Turbo S for sure. What this car does better than anything else is corner and handle. And there are a lot of reasons for that. But first I have a fun fact for you. Did you know that this epic insane car with a four liter flat six with 502 horsepower and all the aero bits and mechanical bits and everything else only weighs 262 pounds more than the itty bitty subaru brz yeah this is quite light considering how big the Porsche 911 has become. I showed you that carbon fiber reinforced plastic. I talked about the thin glass, all those things. Also, 
that double wishbone front suspension plucked straight from a race car, which was originally plucked from a prototype version of a race car. And the rear suspension's pretty darn good too. A five-link, multi-link independent rear suspension that more or less pretty much foregoes bushings and replaces everything with ball joints, which will give you better response and fast reactions. And there's ball joints up front as well. And more technology. This also has rear axle steering. That is standard on the GT3. And it will turn up to two degrees in the same direction in high speeds and up to two degrees in the opposite direction at low speeds. Low speeds gives you more maneuverability. High speeds gives you more stability. All great things. Also, all that work on the body. This thing has legit downforce. All told, Porsche says this will lap the Nordschleife Nürburgring 17 seconds faster than the outgoing GT3. Now, a big part of that's got to be the optionally available Michelin Cup 2R tires, which are basically race tires that uh, somehow <laughs> became street legal. So this thing is mighty fast around the Nordschleife. And that actually also makes it tons of fun around any kind of road, especially some of your favorite back roads. I went around some of mine. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody. Time for a handling test. I do have the GT3 in sport mode, and uh, I'm expecting good things. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, gosh. Oh. Wow, great balance. Great balance, and what pull. Plenty of stability, oh man. Fast steering too, wow. Wow, so much grip. I am going so much faster than usual through here and I still have so much grip. The steering is so responsive to every movement I make. Body control, obviously really good. It's staying nice and flat. These dampers and springs are plenty stiff for the job. Let's do that again. What a glorious noise, come on. <laughs> so much grip, wow. <laughs> okay. Incredible, incredible machine. Incredibly fast turn and response. Very, very accurate and precise steering. Every little twitch, you got a response exactly what you inputted. The ball joints, the double wishbone suspension, it all works extremely well. This is the type of car where you really have to practice and slow your hands down. You're used to kind of yanking things in to kind of get the car to catch up a little bit here no if you do it too quickly the car will just overreact the steering physically the tactile feel of the steering with this race text material on it is fantastic uh, the brakes rock solid the engine incredibly responsive this is just a joy I mean this is obviously laugh out loud joyous <laughs> and I could do that all day even a car as special as this is sometimes gonna have to just putter down the road, maybe travel on the interstate a little bit to get to some of your favorite roads or your favorite racetrack. So with that in mind, I did also take it on the interstate. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for a quick jaunt onto the interstate and a quick chat about the ride of this thing. When it comes to a lot of modern safety systems that almost every car has, this does not have as many of those. So we do have a standard cruise control, and uh, we're gonna turn that on right now. We're cruising at an indicated 80 miles an hour, which is pretty much what traffic is doing right now, and we're spinning about 32, 3300 RPM in sixth gear. This is definitely more revs than usual. It's definitely a bit louder than usual. This is obviously not the quietest engine on the planet. It's a great sound, but you know, if you're on the interstate loud enough, even this would start sounding a bit droney. Also, Porsche put all that work into making this car as light as possible. Carbon fiber reinforced plastic, but also this thinner glass. And thinner glass is fantastic for weight savings. 
not as good for noise isolation and things like that. So you get a lot more of like the general wind noise, road noise, everything else coming through this car. Also, general cabin insulation is lower than average, so that doesn't help either. Also, this is a very stiff suspension, so, you know, you feel every little bump on the interstate, you feel every heave, every expansion joint, you feel all of that. The seats are fantastic. The seats are very comfortable and supportive. The steering wheel is very comfortable to hold on to. The um, center console touchscreen and the instrument cluster, all of that's easy to read and use. And you have a, most everything in terms of like uh, modern infotainment that you'd want, but your ears are gonna pay for it. Your backside's gonna pay for it. So it's basically what I expected, which is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> but it would certainly be comfortable enough to get to where you need to go. And what's really, really good about this car's performance on the interstate is that will it encourage you to instead take some back roads and have a bit of fun. And oh my God, is it so much fun there. Maybe you find a little bit of open road. Maybe you rev it a little bit. Maybe you downshift. Maybe you hear that a little bit. Maybe you hit the gas and you hear that a little bit. And it's so, so good. Oh, that's where this car belongs. Okay, back to more of the fun stuff. I have one more demonstration to show you. So Porsche has something called Auto Blip where it will do the uh, rev matching for you on downshifts. And I'm currently in sport mode and I now have that on. So I will put the car in fifth gear and uh, I'm not gonna touch the throttle. I'm just gonna work the clutch. Well, I'm touching the throttle to keep maintain speed, but I'm not gonna blip the throttle. This is all the computer doing the work. So fifth, fourth, third, second gear. Now, that's a little bit of a bummer for me. I like being able to do those things on my own, but the Porsche system does work very well. And because this engine is so responsive, it can very quickly blip the throttle. You can hear how fast those revs climb. But if I put the car in normal driving mode, that now has auto blip off, so now I can do my own downshifting, no problem. That was fourth to second gear right there. Obviously not quite as clean and neat as what the computer could do, but a little bit more satisfying, if I'm honest. So, this is the biggest GT3 that Porsche has ever made, dimensionally speaking. And it's also probably the heaviest, or close to that, because while it only weighs 11 pounds more than the last generation GT3, it does weigh 11 pounds more. And yet, the technology they poured into this in the right ways, the responsiveness of this engine, the mighty power of this engine, the glorious, amazing sound that this engine makes, oh, it's all so great. And then the double wishbone front suspension, the race derived double wishbone front suspension with all those ball joints replacing bushings. This thing is obviously so, so serious. And yet, and yet, it's all so approachable. That's been one of the most impressive Porsche traits that they've had for decades, which is they can give you mighty power, mighty performance, and yet, you can get there, it's not intimidating. It's so easy to get to and feel the limit of a Porsche, and that makes it so incredibly satisfying to drive. When I open this video and saying, I am in the stratosphere of car enthusiast cars, that's why. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, I'd really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Those things really, really do help me out a lot. Okay. Goodbye.